is a huge, huge, hugely helpful research for all of your English language arts class needs. And in particular, they have an entire subsection of the website that's called No Fear Shakespeare. Now, I've got to tell you, I have confusing feelings as a teacher about No Fear Shakespeare. On the one hand, I like what it does, and I'm going to show you some of what it does and why I like it. And on the other hand, as a purist who really loves Shakespeare in his original language, I kind of hate it. So. I make it available to you because I don't want to just be an elitist snob, and I definitely don't want to be an elitist snob and wind up depriving you of resources. No Fear Shakespeare in high school when you're just starting to discover the bard and his complicated, strange language is a perfectly acceptable resource to dip your feet into the water that is the tremendous lake of Shakespeare. All right, so what is it? I mean, if you haven't used it before, let's take a look. So this is the home page, the link is included uh, in the same page as this video is, but you'll notice here a list of all the plays. Full text of Shakespeare's plays and sonnets side by side with translations into modern English. Now, we say modern English, what we mean is not Elizabethan English, and I've probably already said to you now there is no such thing as Shakespeare writing in Old English. Old English sounds like Norwegian. That's a different rant for another time, but let's take a look at a play. Let's start with Henry V, one of his most popular plays. You have overall, you have a breakdown. Act and then scene by scene through the whole play. And each of these little breakdowns gives you, you know, like a Netflix style blurb of what happens in the scene. And that's great. That's a great little overview tool. But let's begin at the beginning so that you can take a look at it. On the left, you've got Shakespeare's original language, and on the right, you have a more, what I would call, contemporary English translation. This is useful to get an overall sense of the language, to make sure that you understand what is being talked about. Now, the truth is, when you're preparing a monologue to whether it's for class or to audition or whatever, you have to obviously really know and understand the original language. But this is a great way, as I said, to dip your feet in, all right? And you can read over it and look at it, and it's almost line by line in how it translates. But, but, unworthy scaffold, theater, da 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 da, da right? Okay, so as you read through it, you get a general sense of what it means. And it's useful for that reason. It also gives you information about the characters. So let's go back. We can look through any of the different scenes to read more. There's a study guide as well. The study guide is useful because it gives you an overview of the plot summary of the play. Or you can go scene by scene. For the research for class, start with the plot overview as you're sorting through your different monologue options. But once you pick your monologue, then you're going to need to dive deeper into the play to make sure you understand what's going on. It also has information about the character. So I know if I've picked a character that's from this play for looking at their monologue, uh, let's say I picked a monologue of Henry V, so I'm going to click on that. And here is a summary of the character. Now, this is not gospel. What I mean by that is, this is a useful place to start out as you read, and you're, you're a young actor, and you're a student, and you're learning, and you're trying to understand the character good. But also, as you read and as you work on the character, you also get to form your own opinions. Remember, not everything that's on the internet is perfect. Crazy, right? So this is a, a, a simple introduction into No Fear Shakespeare, and... This is what I want you to use as you begin your research into your different monologues. And we're also going to use this as a jumping off point once you pick your monologue.